Today is National Sunday. We'll be here again in Nashville at the Chance of Fame. The epistle for this Passion Sunday should begin Passion Tide 2020. Is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. Brethren, Christ being come and high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats or of calves, but by his own blood, entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of an heifer being sprinkled, sanctify as such as are defiled with the cleansing of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted unto God, cleanse our conscience from, the de from dead works to serve the living God? And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death, for the redemption of these transgressions, which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In the Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 8. At that time, Jesus said to the multitude of the Jews, Which of you shall convict me of sin? And if I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. And many men I say unto you, If any man shall keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets. And thou sayest, if any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say that I know him not, I should be like unto you, a liar. But I do know him. And do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen our Abraham? Jesus said to them, They met him, and I say unto you, If our Abraham was made, I am. The Zerg of stones therefore to cast at him, but he Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Those are the words of today's holy gospel. Men. Many people today now say the news media around the world. Donald Trump even announced it a few weeks ago. It's good to see such great unity. 148 countries reacting together against this great coronavirus crisis. Religious leaders being responsible. Countries being responsible. And throughout the world, they're taking steps, real steps, to deal with this crisis. Driving down here, we see the signs on the board. It says, do your part. Stay apart. We're all in this together. No advertised newspaper, no, this company and that company says, practice social distancing, do your part, stay apart, be responsible, don't forget to wash your hands, very important. And remember that we are have to fight together to end this virus, this great crisis. And it's good to see governments pulling together. Now what's most interesting and what's really encouraging is to see the church behind this. So encouraging to see that. Mm. Because what do we see? 
That you realize the official proclamation of the Society of St. Pius X, also the Friar St. Peter made the same proclamation, and as did many, many other churches. First week after the announcement of this national emergency a few weeks ago, we have directives. In order to be responsible, make sure that if you have a cough, if you have a cold, or any kind of symptoms, stay at home. Do not go to church and infect your neighbors. This is gravely irresponsible. Furthermore, we have taken directives to make sure that this evil does not spread. There will no longer be holy water in the holy water fount. Official decree from on high, because as you know, if you, take, if you put your hand in water and someone else puts their hand in water, this can cause infection. That's why there are as many sinks in a bathroom and a kitchen in, in a public, as a public establishment as there are people that visit it. So if you have a McDonald's or something in which 1,000 people visit, you'll notice that there's 1,000 sinks in every McDonald's. <laughs> because after all, if you were to wash your hands in the same place where someone else washed his hands, this could cause the spreading of infectious disease. Therefore, we don't have a thousand holy water fonts in the church, so in order to be responsible, we're going to take all holy water out. By the way, the church is going to manifest its social responsibility. We are good citizens. We're going to make sure that if you are sick, the priest, if he gets sick, then what? Mm. What hope do you have? Mm. So therefore, in order that you might always have the priest available, Sick calls are canceled. Now this is all done before the government puts a gun to anyone's head. Before there's any threats of going to jail. And it's so good to see. And what is it that we see? As we mentioned the theme of the last sermon, that was the nice version. This won't be the nice version. The world doesn't need God anymore. Thank God we don't need God. Now imagine that you're one of the angels in heaven before the throne of God. Or one of the millions of saints who now look at God face to face after they died a holy death. Or those that are suffering in purgatory because they died in the state of grace were not yet purified. You know, when I was on earth, these poor souls suffered purgatory. I wished I washed my hands more often. <laughs> Both on earth, I wish that I was more clean and had a healthier diet. <laughs> I lived to be 103, but if I changed my diet, I could have been 104 and a half. <laughs> and all I've got to worry about now is eternity. And what is that to 104 years on this planet? <laughs> If only I was more responsible on earth and washed my hands more often. Practice social distancing. The only people that practice social distancing are wives when they're mad at their husbands. Then they practice social distancing. But what is it that is required? We must be socially distant. Did you know that if you're socially distant, you can't go to confession? It's an invalid confession. You have to be within range of the Padre before you can go to confession. If you're socially distant, you can't receive an anointing. You can't be anointed before you die. And if you're socially distant, you can't receive Holy Communion. You know what? If you're not socially distant, you can't have a Big Mac. <laughs> On the way down, driving here early this morning, we stopped at one of those establishments and there was social distancing tape on the floor. The manager lady came around and said, I'm sorry, but you have to be six feet away from each other. When she did that, she almost hit the guy next to her who was an employee. <laughs> they were not socially distant. I was very concerned because I noticed that the guy flipping the hamburgers, I guess it was, Mc, it was McMuffin burgers in the morning, the guy flipping the McMuffin burgers was not socially distant from the lady. And she act, he actually, you're not going to believe this, but he took 
he took the Egg McMuffin and he handed it to the lady. And then she brought it over and put it into a bag. Don't they understand? We have to be socially distant in order to have healthy food, in order to have safe coffee. What you do is you take that hamburger and you toss it six feet and catch the darn thing. Learn how to pour coffee like they do in India. Birth going to India just to see how they pour coffee. Especially in Tamil Nadu. They pour the coffee in a little cup and they have a little tray and the way they cool it down, they pull the tray, they take it and they pour a big stream about six feet long. We need Indians to come over and train people how to pour coffee. When they pour it, it's six foot stream. They go and they don't spill a single drop. We need them to train us. Otherwise, it's unsafe coffee. What is this doing to heaven? <coughs> think God is happy? Think the saints are happy? Or think maybe they're really ticked off? Forget about the Bilderbergers. Forget about the police. Are they out there with machine guns? Not yet. You see the army cars going down the road? No, I didn't see any. You see the soldiers out there with guns saying you can't go and worship our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you see them throwing people in prison? No, they're just telling you to be responsible. And what does responsible mean? It means follow the world and not God. It's well written what happened to our churches a long time ago. But there's a point where, wake up. You usually say wake up and smell the coffee, but this is Vietnam. Wake up and smell the napalm in the morning. There is fire in the jungle. There's fire in the church. And it comes from napalm and it's burning really bad. And people are burning on their way to hell. And what's happening right now? It's in the gospel. On this day when we cover the statues. And it says it in the last word of the gospel today, and Jesus went out of the temple. He's not there anymore. <clears throat> He's not there in the holy water fount. And what is it that is inside of the wisdom of these priests? They've stopped saying the masses publicly, but now they do have some public masses. Different rules have been put in place. How our society has been irresponsible. We will make sure that we count the people before mass. So in some churches of the society, if your name starts with A to G, you go to the first mass. And that's the alphabet on the second mass. If you get any kind of weird number, like an African, African name that starts with clicks, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't go to mass. Mm. Furthermore, if you have not yet, right at the age of receiving the sacraments, you must keep your children at home. They have not yet made their first Holy Communion. Some got a first come, first serve basis. One of my brothers is a usher. He's having a great time. Some other ushers can always go to Mass. I don't know why that is. But his job is to hand out tickets. And when they reach the number, that's it. No more tickets. Like the soup Nazi in New York City. No soup for you today. No soup for you. No Jesus for you today. No Jesus for you today. <laughs> Bad day to receive Jesus. Sorry, man. Get there early next time. <laughs> Parkings are premium. <clears throat> you know what we're being trained to do? Some of you might remember. In the 60s, they started doing this. You go to school, a little child, and he learns. First grade, second grade. You know what? There was once a boat. And the boat can only hold nine people. And if you put ten people in a boat, it sinks and it drowns. And so there was a storm, and ten people got in the boat. But it can only hold nine. Now if all ten people stay in the boat, everybody's going to die. Children, you don't want everyone to die, do you? That isn't right, is it? No, that's not right, teacher. But there's 10 people in the boat. 
you got to choose which one to throw out. There's a mother that has five children at home. There's a police officer. There's a guy who's on his way to be in prison for being a serial killer. Mm. And then there's another guy there who's single and just a bum. Mm. There's another guy who's a bridge builder. Another guy who's a really nice person. But there's ten people in the boat. What do you got to do? Which one do you throw out? Everybody vote. Mm -hmm. Which one do you throw out? The day will come when they come to your house. You're going to have to make a decision. You've got seven children. And I'm going to kill every one of them. But if you decide, pick one. And I will save the rest. Make the sacrifice. There was a recent movie called Silence by Martin Scorsese. You have to be an ex-Catholic. You have to abandon Jesus Christ as a Catholic before you can understand these things. About a priest who gave up his faith in Japan 200 years ago. But not a true story. He is finally given a choice. The Japanese persecutors told him you see those seven Catholics there? We're hanging them upside down. We're torturing them and bleeding them to death. It's going to take them three or four days to die in great agony. We're not going to hurt you. We're going to hurt them. You want them to live? All you got to do is step on the face of Jesus Christ on the picture. That's all you got to do. And so he did. And I heard about this when I was in New York City. I think it was these guys' first year or their second year. We were doing a pilgrimage. We were doing our February the second trip. It was in the back of St. Patrick's, and there was a priest up there giving a little talk. And he mentioned about this movie, the Catholic priest, supposed to be a conservative priest, and Elvis Soto, of course. He said, there's a movie now about this priest and how he sacrificed. And Jesus was pleased with him because he made the sacrifice of stepping on Christ's face in order to save those eight people. What a great sacrifice he had to make. What do the billboards tell you? Make sacrifices. Save the nation. Turn your neighbor in. We're not social distancing. you got to do your part to be a good citizen. Be responsible. Make sure you keep your distance. Keep your children locked in your house because if they go outside and catch the sun, they may not get the virus. <laughs> what is being done? It is a test. <laughs> and the people of God are failing the test. They have Mass in St. Mary's, Kansas this week. So there's every single Mass. They're practicing social distancing. Those who do not have uh, every child under the age of First Communion, so that's a thousand kids right there, don't come to Mass. Those who do come to Mass will be a Mass in the main church and also in the big gym. And everybody will be six feet apart. I'm going to be responsible. And remember the official decree of Father Vechner a few weeks ago, imitating the exact decree of the Navasordo. No handshaking. Do not shake hands. This is absolutely disgusting and irresponsible. There will no longer be any association after the Mass. Because we are going to be responsible. Now what happened in the past? First thing, we have a minor problem here. Do any of you know someone who's dying of the coronavirus? <laughs> if it was an epidemic and everyone is dying, we should be driving past body banks. <laughs> there have been epidemics and pandemics in the past. And also, who should be next to those body banks? Priests. One clergyman reported just the other day going to a hospital in Seattle. I don't even think it was a Catholic. Wants to visit his sheep. 
Catholics forget it. They're busy at home watching Fox News. Not allowed. You know why? Only necessary travel can be done. You should only do necessary things. Do you think that's not climbing up to heaven? What is necessary? Necessary means that which cannot not be. There's levels of necessary. But what cannot not be? You know what cannot not be? I can't lose my job. Mm -hmm. You know what cannot not be? I can't endanger my health. <laughs> what cannot not be? I can't be perceived as a bad citizen. What about Jesus Christ? Did he die a good citizen? He was unapproved by the government on the last day of his life. What about our follow, our ancestors? Is it light? Change your doctrine, you will change your practice. God has gone out of the temple of the so-called traditional movement. He ain't not there. He's not there. He has gone out of the society of the pious in the church. Go back. On the morning of Good Friday, God was behind that veil, and he was in the temple. And Caiaphas, though he was a wicked priest, he stood in the presence of God. After 3 p.m., he went back to the same temple. But there was an earthquake that happened at 3 o'clock that afternoon. And the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Who rent the temple veil? God did. Behold, the veil of the fake traditional movement has been rent. And God is not in that church. Of course, where there is a valid consecration, the Blessed Sacrament is present trapped in a cocoon. The Blessed Sacrament is present in a Satanic Mass. The Blessed Sacrament is present in an Orthodox Mass in which the priest is a valid priest and says a Mass in schism and heresy. The Blessed Sacrament is present in many places where God is not. Open your eyes. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Who has eyes to see, let him see. And the Lord Jesus Christ says to the Jews, while they are the people of God, before the ending of the Old Testament, it has not yet ended. And what does he say in his war against the Jews? Which of you can convict me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore, you hear them not, because you are not of God. This is what Christ is saying to the baptized Catholic. This is what Christ is saying to the traditional holy Catholic. You're one of the chosen ones. You got a letter with the right, you got a name with the right letter of the alphabet. You got a connection with the good Padre. You got special treatment. <laughs> what about those whom Christ came to save? He said, I've not come to save those with special treatment. I've not come to save those that are being well cared for. I've not come to save those that are just. I have come to save the sinners. Because the cornerstone is the stone that was rejected by the builders. Have times changed? No, they have not. The cornerstone is a stone rejected by the builders. That's the one that becomes the head of the corner. The builders rejected the cornerstone that is Christ, but he still became the union. Jews hate Gentiles, and Gentiles hate Jews. And who is the one that united them? Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. But he was rejected by the builders, 
He was rejected by the Gentiles. He was rejected by the Jews. He was rejected by the priests. He was rejected by the magistrates. He was rejected by the faithful. He was rejected by everyone except his holy mother. But he's still the union between all those that are separated, and there is no other union. They're going to make it illegal for you to be anointed. Now you're going to a hospital, or you're going into a prison. One of the girls were prisoners, working in a home, not a nursing home, but an assisted living home. They have each individual bedrooms, individual rooms. They're not allowed to go out of their rooms. They're locked up. The food is brought in their rooms. Some have already collapsed in the first week because of not eating enough. They're scared. They can't see their children. The children can't see them. They're not allowed to interact with each other. They just stay in their rooms and watch the news. And now the virus is spreading. What is the virus that matters? It's called the virus of sin. It's called the virus of heresy. The virus of hating God. We're fighting against the wrong virus. Three weeks ago in the United States, since the beginning of the flu season, 22,000 Americans died from the regular flu. I checked the stats last night or the night before. As of the last three weeks, there are now 29,000 dead Americans from the regular flu. That means 7,000 died in the last three weeks from the regular flu. Now, two years ago, 80,000 Americans died from the regular flu. Last year, 34,000. Two years ago, twice that number, 80,000. <coughs> Nobody cared. 1919, the biggest pandemic in the history of the United States, and actually that we've recorded in the world in recent times, 50 million died. 675,000 in the United States. They didn't shut down churches then. They didn't stop anointings then. And the world continued. People die every single day, and they will die every day till the end of the world. What matters is the state of their souls. And what's the point in being alive if you don't love God? What's the point in being alive if you don't live? Walking at the airport in Seattle a few weeks ago. Aren't you worried, said one guy, and a man walked by and said, when you stop living, you start dying. That's right. Mm. Everybody has stopped living, even their pagan, stupid life, even their empty life. They've stopped living. They are starting to die. In fact, they've been dying for a long time. They just now get to maybe take a look at it. Also saw last night, very briefly, walking by someone's house. The recommendations of Fox News, you can trust them because they're the conservatives. They voted for Trump. They are a no one in this terrible crisis of the, of the, of the, of the, of the virus. 2010 deaths in the United States, 120,000 recorded yesterday. Don't worry about the 7,000 that died from the flu in the last few weeks. We don't care about them. Now, the fact is, this is a terrible pandemic, and it's not just terrible on people's health. It's also, you know what the problem is? There's mental health issues, too. So we've got a mental health doctor who you can check in online for only $20 a, a, an hour. That's not bad, really. You can think about it because your mental health will be taken care of. And he's going he's gonna to talk to you and give advice. So they gave advice. First advice, if you want to solve the problem of mental health, avoid naps. Very important. Avoid naps. Naps cause depression. When you get up in the morning, don't run around all day in your PJs. This causes depression. Get dressed. Change your clothes often. Put on one dress and another one. Have a routine. Yes, let's take the steps. Make sure our mental health is taken care of. And Jesus Christ is nowhere there. And God is nowhere there in any way. And that includes the Catholics, the Holy Catholics. And what are we worried about? We're worried about two terrible things. 
One, of course, is the virus. They're going back to work in China. They gave up on the virus over there, where it all came from. But we'll worry about the virus for the next six months, ten months. I actually heard a, heard a doctor on the, on, the, on the news today. We were coming down listening to the radio, National Proletariat Radio, Communist Radio. And the doctor said, the virus cannot be spread by contact with your hands. It is an airborne virus. It can only be transported by air. And if you get the virus on your hands, it's only when you put it in your mouth, take it in your nose, put it in your eyes, that it enters inside of you. If, if one of the workers at a restaurant was to cough on a head of lettuce and you ate it, you wouldn't get the virus. In your stomach, you got acids and all kinds of things, wage war with stuff that comes out of your stomach. If that was the case, everyone would be dead from one McDonald's trip. But what happens? You can still get the virus, because if you shake the head of lettuce, and it goes into your nose, and goes into a respiratory virus, and you breathe it in, then you can get the virus. So what are they doing? They're spending bazillions of dollars on disinfecting things when the virus comes from people. So what happens when they go back to work? What if they still breathe when they go back to work? I'm not saying I'm accusing them of breathing. I don't want to make any rash accusations. But supposing that they still do, they're going to be spreading the virus. And who cares about the disinfected things? Also, whenever the virus sits on a cardboard box or anything metal or wood, the longest that it can last to stay alive outside of a human body is 72 hours. How long have the plants been shut down? How long have the restaurants been shut down? Oh, heck of a lot longer than 72 hours, but they've got to disinfect and disinfect. They're attacking the wrong things, and the people have confidence in liars and deceivers, and they don't have confidence in God, and that includes the priests of God. What about our Holy Father? What did he do? Canceled Mass. That's a good thing, because it's a new Mass. You should keep guys left for the next 2,000 years. But it is not good why he canceled, because he wants to be safe. No one can go to St. Peter's and pray now because you've got to be safe. In my own life, they're walking all the churches, all around. I already have multiple cases of men who are going to commit suicide walking the streets. And they saw a Catholic church, and they saw a stained glass window, and they saw, and the door was open, and they went in and did not commit suicide because of a stained glass window, because of Christ in a church. We can't have that. And when there is a fear, and when there is trouble, where do men naturally go? They go to God. That's when the churches are full. When you have a boom, it's a bust for the churches. <laughs> when you have a bust, it's a boom for the churches. Everyone wants to go to God when they're struggling. What are they doing? Blocking souls from God. Who are the first ones to help be blocked? The priest. And do you think priests is that God's not going to notice? I said the Latin Mass. One, two, I'm sorry, you're number 17. Only 16 in heaven today. Yesterday was 18. You should have died yesterday. But you're number 17 today and only 16 are getting in. Oh, and by the way, the mission heaven closed 30 minutes ago. You're going to hell, though. Get out of here. You didn't make the schedule. You didn't die soon enough. This is not a joke. This is a mockery of heaven. It's a mockery of our faith. It's a mockery of the church. And heaven is not happy. There shall be handing out punishments. We all know. We complained about the Novo Sur. I went to the Philippines only a few days after Yolanda. The most wicked and most difficult, most violent of all hurricanes ever recorded in the history of the world. Only recorded in the last 300 years. Five, 450 mile an hour winds, ripping down trees, destroying cities, killing thousands and thousands and thousands of Filipinos. They only said a few thousand were killed. I was there just a week after. And destroyed land. What did the priest say? You know the cause of Yolanda? 
global warning. What do the people say? We can get help from the West now. We can get money like you wouldn't believe. The people went after money because the Westerners were going to come in and help them. The priests said the problem is global warming, and they did not repent. When God sends sorrows and God sends troubles, we're supposed to repent. But they are not repenting. And who are the leaders in this non-repentance? It's the responsible priests. And they are responsible for the damnation of many souls. St. John Grissom said, the majority of priests go to hell. That was 1,400, 500 years, 600 years ago when he said that. The majority of priests go to hell, but they do not go to hell because of their terrible sins. Because priests are sinners also, and they commit terrible sins. They must also go to confession. They don't go to hell because of their sins. They go to hell because of the good that they did not do. Because of the responsibility that they did not fulfill. As we mentioned the earlier sermon... What are necessities? What are necessities? Am I a priest only to anoint you when you're dying? Already many times gone to a car accident, walked into a hospital. Father's here, we're all going to die! Is a priest only to be there when you're dying? Is he only to hear your confession when you're in mortal sin? Is he only to teach you the catechism so you have it memorized, so you don't make a bad mistake when you go before the judgment seat? What is a priest for? He's for every trouble. Father, three o'clock in the morning call. Father, Father, you gotta help me. I'm having a great crisis. What is it? My dog died. I can't take it. My dog died. That's a pretty serious crisis. You may have heard of St. Blaise. We mention him often. Instead of St. Blaise, he could never say no to anyone. One day a woman came to St. Blaise, back in the height of the persecution of the church in the 200s. Blaise, Blaise, you've got to help me because I have a pig that I sleep with. Not a husband, but a pig. She loved her pig. I've got a pig, a pet pig I sleep with, and I love this pig. A, a wolf came and took my pig away. You've got to save my pig. Get my pig back. What should Blaise have said? Do you realize right now we're in the persecution? They're killing Catholics right and left. There's dead bodies everywhere. There's war going on. People are threatened. And you want me to worry about your stinking pig? That is not what Blaze did. Blaze was upset. And he's a saint. And he cried out to the woods and he said, You wicked wolf, bring that pig back. <laughs> and the wolf brought the pig back. Blaze thought it was important. Did that affect us? Oh, yes, it did. In the early 90s, my brother, the priest in New York, in New York, in New York same parish I would take over later, Long Island, there was a man named George. Wasn't practicing his faith, but he was a Catholic. He had throat cancer. So he went to my brother, Father Tim Viber, went to him and said, Look, you know, look, uh, Father, I got throat cancer. Doctors say there's no hope. But I know about St. Blaze and the blessing of throats. Can you bless my throat with the Blaze candles? It was not February, so he had to do his Blaze blessing. And he blessed his throat with the candles. He went back to the doctor and he was cured of his throat cancer. And he made a vow he lived to stay next to the church until he died. And so he did. Changing light bulbs, living at the church. Why did he get those candles? Because of that woman. And because Blaze thought taking care of a woman's pig was important. In the time of persecution. She came back to Blaze and brought him candles and brought him candles. He says, look, I know you're grateful about saving your pig. But stop bringing me candles. When I die, said St. Blaise, rather go and light a candle at church and pray for me. 
because she brought candles to the church, one day a boy's throat was cured from a bone going sideways in it by those candles, and hence we have the blessing of throats. But what's the origin of the blessing of throats? Because Blaise the bishop, in the midst of a great persecution, when Catholics were being killed, was worried about a pet pig. What is important to God? Is it our big troubles? No, God loves our little troubles. You ever heard of St. Anthony? Find my lucky sock. I'm busy seeing God face to face, putting out, dealing with wars and persecutions. What do I care about your stinking sock? You gotta find my lucky sock. My team's playing tonight. He finds your lucky sock. It's important to Anthony. What is important to Christ? All our troubles, not just the big ones, but the little ones. You're worried about nothing. Guess what? Join the human race. We're worried about this stupid virus, and it's nothing. We're worried about the government, and they're nothing. We're worried about the guns and ammunition, they're nothing. We're going to protect ourselves our bank accounts, and guess what? One day, they're going to be nothing. We're we'll protecting ourselves with guns. That won't help either. Our protection is in heaven. Our protection is with the angels. One well, of the best, the best defense against the pestilence, two things. The scapular and holy water. But they've taken the holy water out of the font under holy obedience. I heard of a Nova Soto priest, a conservative Nova Soto priest, a few weeks ago, weeping. And what he said was this. I'll never lock the doors of my church. I'll never stop one faithful from coming in here. I'd rather die. They'll have to take the keys of the church out of my hands over my dead body. Because I love all my sheep. But what happened? I'm under obedience. It's my bishop that makes me do this. We are in a tragic time because man does not turn to God when he should. He doesn't do the right things. There is great wickedness all around us. What's the solution to the coronavirus? Where's God doing? Mm. One thing you can do is ask Sasquatch about it. Maybe he saw it. Mm. There are viruses every year. Mm. Most people get a common cold. Some will die from it. Just like they die from influenza. But if you don't die from influenza, if you don't die from a virus, you will die from something else. You will die. Live in Christ. Don't stop living. Don't stop working. Don't stop playing. Don't stop praying. Don't stop doing your duty. Do your duty and live your life. God is first. And they've taken God out. God is no longer first for us. Let's open our eyes and see. Make God first again. We're made to know, love, and serve God. And by this means, to save our souls. Don't worry about anything else. Really, God bless you all. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.